I had to take you out to the club real quick. Is that all right? I had to wake everybody back up. I saw that everybody was on 10. Y'all still on 10? We about to take it way past 10, y'all. Are we live? All right, check this out. Let me find, let me find this. Let me find this. Here we go. I think I might need this. Y'all see this, right? Everybody take out your phone right now. Take out your phone right now. We're going to do something that's never been done in Five Links history. Ever. We're about to make this whole thing go viral right now. We're going to break the internet. I need everybody to participate. Once you have your phone, go to your Facebook right now. You can follow either one of my pages right now. Matter of fact, just follow Kurt Anderson on, on Facebook. And I want you to follow the page. We're going to go live. Or you can go live on your own page. Are you with me? Are you with me? When you go live, press hashtag Five Links Atlanta. Are you with me? Hashtag Five Links Atlanta. Once you have it up and live, I want you to stand up. Hashtag Five Links Atlanta. You can go to Kurt Anderson or we go Facebook or Instagram if you got Instagram. Thomas has got it. Ashley's got it. Who else? Who else? Mariko's got it. Let's go. Ricardo's got it. Let's go. PJ's got it. Jay's got it. Lanier's got it. South Carolina's got it. What's up? North Carolina's got it. Let's go. Come on, I need more people standing. We're going to break the internet. We're going to do something never been done in, in network marketing history, y'all. Jason's about to go live. Let's go. Hey, help the person next to you if they looking clueless. Show them how to spell Facebook. <laughs> you got it? Once you got it, stand up. I need more people standing up. Lenore's got it. Let's go. Tony's got it. Let's go. Linda's got it. Let's go. Katrina's got it. Let's go. Come on, who else has it? The richest have it. Jay's got it. Let's go. All right, we got it over here. Listen up, y'all. I want everybody to keep that Facebook live. You can sit back down if you want to sit back down, but I want you to keep that Facebook live. I want everybody in your network to see that you're part of the best network marketing company ever. If you are rock solid in five links, make some noise right now. Put those fives up so everybody in the world can see what you got going on. If you're going to be part of that 25 customer club, make some noise right now. If you way back in the back, you're the next SVP to walk this stage, make some noise right now. All right, listen up. Keep it live. Keep it live. Keep it live. I'm going to tell you guys a story. You can sit back down. Sit back down. Everybody's on. Share it. If your friend is on, share it. Keep going. Keep going. Until your battery dies, we're going to keep this thing going. You should have bought a power play when we had them left. <laughs> Let's go. All right, check this out, y'all. I want you guys to hear something. It was the missing piece. I, want, I need y'all to look at me, though. Some of y'all are uh, Facebook in the back of the room. I'm up here. <laughs> All right. Listen up. I've been in Five Links now for five and a half years. How long? This was the first time ever that I had to arrive on a Thursday. Are you with me? We had some personal things we had to handle at home as parents, as business partners that we had to handle back home. And let me tell you what happened. I started getting calls and texts and said, have you quit? I couldn't believe it. I was just here last nationals telling you how great of a company this is, and you think I would quit? Or maybe y'all heard that from somebody else. <laughs> I'm not going to start up. Keep it on the internet because I want them to see this. Understand right now, when you leave from right here, when you know what you're part of, the real people won't have to ask. They know. They know if blood is, is running through your veins. If they know why you're doing this. They know that you don't have any quit in you. I'm telling you right now, guys, I, am on a, I was on a quest when I started this company, when I started in this company five and a half years ago, and that was to figure out what the secret was. I came to my first national as a guest. I was sitting in the front row, right where Thomas Felder is sitting, right where John Jones is sitting, right where these top leaders are sitting. I was a guest of my wife, my girlfriend at the time, 
And she said, I want you to come hear me speak. I said, all right, let me hear what you got. But check this out. I saw all these people who walked the stage as senior vice presidents, platinums and double platinums. There were no diamonds yet. And they were making a lot of money. I didn't, I didn't see their paychecks, but I could tell by looking at them that they were doing well. You ever seen somebody look like they were doing better than you? And I said, well, I don't know what all this hype is about this company, but I started to think to myself, if they invited 10,000 people to this room to fool me, man, they did a good job. I started to think, what if it worked? What if it worked? What if I was able to break the curse of poverty that's happening to my community? What if? I started thinking to myself, what if I could take care of my mom and my dad and my wife and my children and my relatives and I could take care of generations and generations? What if? So I started thinking to myself, man, what if this thing worked? See, I never, ever doubted. Never doubted. They say when you hit SVP, the one of the questions says, did you ever want to quit? Hell no. I'm telling you guys right now, the one thing that I saw is that this business, if it worked, if it was real, guess what? I needed to get the answers. And every single time that you see, uh, you come to a convention, or you come to a training, a lot of times you get hyped up. You get excited. Anybody here hyped up right now? Let's be honest. I'm pumped up too. But sometimes you walk away without grabbing some skill set. Are you with me? I want to give it up for Double Platinum Senior Vice President, Mr. Marshall Fortson, for doing a great training this morning. Let's give it up for him real quick. Because sometimes we need hype, but sometimes we got to get the skills that are going to pay the bills, yes or yes. So I want to continue with that, but there were some things that I was learning. So when I first started in the business, I was interested. What was I? So I start off, I said, okay, let me see how I can put a rep, show up to an event. Okay, this is cool, let me make a bonus. But as I started to grow and I started to learn more things, I started to say to myself, wait a minute, I might have to put a little bit more effort in for this thing to really start to take over my family, to really start helping me out. So I said, Kurt, you're gonna have to get committed. What are you gonna have to get? So when I got committed, I said, well, that means I might have to make some sacrifice. That means I might have to give up some time for some things like at things I like, I might have to give up some things of my, my, my social time. I might have to give up a few things to get to where I want to be. Are you with me? But then right before I hit the position of uh, uh, senior vice president, matter of fact, I just hit senior vice president, and I was doing good. I was only committed. There was another level past commitment, and something happened that changed my business forever. Are you with me? I got a call said, Kurt, you might want to check Facebook. I said, why, what's going on? They said, a bunch of your leaders have quit. In one day, eight national directors, including two national director all-stars, left my team in one day. They went on to a company that is no longer in business now. <laughs> and at that moment, my wife looked at me and, and started to laugh. And I didn't think it was so funny. I lost some of my best people, so I thought. And she said, what are you going to do now? Something just came inside of me and said, ooh, ooh. I knew they were not going to get the best of me. And to everybody who's looking at me right now, I don't want anybody to ever get the best of you. So that day, I, be, I went all in. I went to the next level, it's called all in. And at all in, there was no turning back. There was no being scared. There was no listening to rumors. There was no noise. At this point, it was either success or death. That was it. There was no option for me. And once you get to that level in life, there's no turning back. Who here is ready to go all in? So I said, okay. There's some things I'm still missing from my, my arsenal, some, some things I need to become the best, things I need to go from SVP to platinum and to beyond in this company and in this industry and in life. And in one of these things, I want you guys to hear this, was closing the deal because I was close to greatness. So today I'm going to teach everybody that missing thing. Anybody here would love to be able to close the deal every time you walk into a situation, every time you get in front of a prospect, every time you get in, be, be, uh, in front of a, pers a prospective customer, who here wants to be able to close the deal? Make some noise if that was one of the things you felt like, man, I, I could get a little bit better at closing. Yes or yes? 
All right, so guys, today I'm going to show you about this process that I had to kind of go through, I had to learn in order for me to get better. All right, so guys, if you want to stop Facebook Live because your arm is hurting, I understand. But the information is only going to get better and better and better. So understand, you can stop. PJ, I need you to keep going. <laughs> we need to keep going with it. Understand. Check this out. So what's the process? I didn't know what the process was. I'm out just, really, I'm just ignorance on fire. I'm right out there and just off of pure excitement, I'm getting people enrolled in five links to say, look, if I can do it, you can do it. If, if this person can do it, they can do it. But I really had no skill set. It was just me just hyped up and excited. But what's going to happen two weeks after you leave this nationals, the hype's going to die down. There's going to be some dark moments when you don't have nine people like Ashley had at her PBR. Some of y'all saying, man, if I could get three people my PBR, I'd be just like Ashley one day, right? <laughs> Understand, you have to get some skills. You have to be able to build this thing. So what's the process? Let's check this out. This is the decision-making process that's typically known in sales. Typically known in sales, this is it. And for some of you guys who don't know this is sales, you might want to walk out and walk back in. This is sales. Are you with me? It's not traditional sales, but this is sales. It's network marketing, direct sales industry. Yes or yes? So this is the typical process. Establish rapport, find the need, build value, create desire, overcome obstacles, close the, the sale, and follow up. But this is the time. I want you to look at top to bottom. You want to spend more time. Typically, it's what they're doing. They're spending more time with the follow-up at the bottom than they are even establishing rapport. But here's the truth. The truth is it looks more like this. It's more inverted. It's more time that you must spend establishing rapport, then finding need, then building value, then creating desire, then overcoming obstacles, closing the deal, and following up. Are you guys with me? And this is research, all right? So guys, understand, I went to a course by a gentleman by the name of Chet Holmes, who happens to be the, used to be, rest in peace, the sales partner for Tony Robbins. Anybody heard of a guy named Tony Robbins? So all of Tony Robbins' sales programs come through this guy named Chet Holmes, so I took his course. I said, I want to figure out how to be better at it, but sometimes, just like you're here today, you have to keep investing in your success, yes or yes? So as Chet Holmes is teaching this, and by the way, he became one of the top salespeople in the world by also being the sales manager for a guy named Charlie Munger, who happens to be Warren Buffett's business partner. Is this a good person to get some information from? So guys, I want you to understand what happens next. What happens next is five links process is a little bit different, yes or yes? So let's look at the five links process and where you need to be spending your time. Right now, we have to be spent, oh, I need a time out. Get up real quick, everybody stand up one more time. One more time, it's the end of the day, y'all. I learned something else too. I want everybody to do this stretch right here. Give me this one right here. When you twist your spine, you are sending oxygen to your brain. Let's wake them brains up, all right? Some of y'all in the back need to keep stretching. Let's go. Some of y'all ate a whole lot back there. Keep on stretching, all right? All right, let's sit back down really quick. Let's sit back down really quick. So here's the five links process. First off, you have to network. There's so many people in this room. You come in and you see the business, and probably I did too, but what happens is you realize, hey, I can do well in this business if I just get a few people to get started but you forget that you might need to meet a few people. And you start talking to people at the gas station. You start talking to people anywhere you can possibly find them. And you realize, wait a minute, this thing is getting tough because I'm doing all cold market. But if you start to build your network, this business will get easier. Are you with me? So that's going to be the most important step. Then peaking, then exposing, following up, the three-way call, the close, and then the launch. Are you guys with me? So I'm going to break this down so you can understand it because I want you to walk away with the skill. What this really is, not just some letters on the slide, I want you to really see what's going on here. So check this out. By the way, the clothes, I learned this through watching my wife doing this presentation. The clothes is not just a step in the process, it's the process. I couldn't figure it out when I went to a presentation, I was sitting back waiting for this this, this one-liner that was going to get everybody in the room to whip out a credit card and sign their life away in five links. And I sat back waiting. I said, oh, she's about to kill him now. I can hear it coming. Here it goes. And it never happened, but they still signed up. I said, what was she doing? But throughout the entire process, what she was doing was she was taking away doubt. 
She was educating people. She was closing throughout the entire process. There's no trick line that you have to do. If you just educate people and you make, help them make an informed decision, you will win. So let's talk about what your net, how to network, all right? First step, get out the house. I love y'all. I know I do. I only see some of y'all in two places, the internet and nationals. You got to get out the house. You got to commit to say, look, I'm going to take the first step. I'm going to take that leap of faith. I'm going to go out and I'm going to meet some people. Reach out to some friends, some family. Join some organizations. You know that's the easiest place to get people to join your business? I was in Staples the other day, and I was getting some, some materials printed for my team. And there was a young lady who was in front of me, and she was giving the, the guy a hard time about really just trying to rush him to get going. And she says, sir, you have to hurry up. I have a meeting with 250 people right now. You got to hurry with my stuff. And I'm next to her in line. She says, I'm the president of the Virginia Democrats. I said, man, I live in Virginia. I'm a Democrat. Excuse me, ma'am, how are you today? Are you with me? I wanted to get out and I wanted to join her organization. I wanted to meet some new people, but you have to take some initiative to get started with those things. Get active in your community. Like once again, get out the house, baseball teams for your kids or whatever. The project cleanups that they're doing, that you clean up your community, whatever they're doing, you have to get active. Help someone else out. Add value to someone else's life. And I'm so glad that uh, double, uh, double Platinum Senior Vice President Ms. Uh, Patrice Jones is in the front row. She may not remember this, but I quote her all the time. I was on an SVP panel when I first hit SVP, and she said something at this panel that changed my life. And I want you guys to understand that this helped me with understanding how to help people network. She said, and pardon me if I misquote her, but it was something to the fact of that you are, most people are walking through life and they're trying to take withdrawals. They're trying to get people started. They're trying to sign people up, but they made no deposits in any other person's life besides their own. And when she said that, I said, man, that's it. People are going up and they're thinking, why am I striking out? And the problem is, it's because all you're doing is begging, 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 but you're adding no value to anyone else's life. So I want everybody here to make a commitment, not to throw up the five and say we're strong. No, I want you to go out and make your community strong. Go out and help somebody else. And I promise you, in turn, Five Links will become a stronger company. Your business will become a stronger business. Are you with me? Thank you, Patrice. On top of that, make sure you're doing the smart things. Like, don't have this great conversation with someone, get them all excited, and then forget to get their info. I say, man, she was good. Look, that dude was good. I I don't even know his name. Anybody here done that before? Had that great conversation. I was at the gym. I'm getting ready to, my gym membership is getting ready to expire. I moved to a different gym. I got like a few days left, and somebody was talking to me, and I was rushing out. I took a phone call. He walked off. I forgot his information. I said, man, I forgot. Understand, guys, this is part of networking. You got to network. Remember, your network determines your what? <laughs> Net worth. Let's keep going. You got to peak interest. Marshall gave y'all a billion dollar peak early today. A billion dollar peak. And for those who think that diamonds and platinums don't take notes, guess what, I was taking notes. Listen, don't get promoted and get up on your high horse. Don't get promoted and forget what got you here. Don't pay to come to Nationals and forget what you're doing here. Understand, I'm a student too. I just sit in a better seat, that's it. I'm learning the game every single day I'm here to get better. He said he was starting a million dollar project, this was his peak. I said, a million dollar project, damn, Marsh, that sounds good. <laughs> I wrote that joint down, I said, a million dollar project. He said, I'm looking for five people. Five people, all right? He said, look, do you want to make 10 grand a month? I said, man, this guy's good, let me write this down. <laughs> he said, look, I'm trying to start a money team. This is how you peak people. WIFM, my, my national director, all-star, Mr. Trevor Thompson always says, look, people are tuned into WIFM radio. What's in it for me? Are you with me? You have to show them what's in it for them. Compliment them. I always talk about people. I always try to edify them. Don't try to be the man. Give it away. Show people how good they can be. Show them their greatness. I compliment them. 
I say, look, Steve, man, I've never seen somebody dressed like that, man. What do you do for a living? I'm piquing his interest, and my next thing I'm doing is I'm hitting him with some information. Are you with me? Set the vision. That's the big deal. You have to show people where you're going. This is not a small-time deal. You have to let people know, look, we just had a conference with a few thousand people in Atlanta, but guess what? By the time we get to New Orleans, we're going to have so many people making hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on our new product called TV. Man, you should want to be a part of that. Set the vision. People have to see where you're going. If there's no vision, people won't follow you. And what you're thinking is, oh, you guys are hitting top positions. Your SVPs and Platinums, people are following you because you live the lifestyle. I started this business off in a green 2003 Honda Accord. And it was not 2003 when I started. <laughs> they weren't following my success. They were following my vision. I said, look, come on, y'all, go with me. I didn't even have AC. I said, look, come on, go with me. I'm going to show you guys a thing or two. I'm going to show you some people I met. All I did was I played the game. I edified these people in the front row. If you humble yourself, peaking interest helps out. I mean, it helps peaking interest a lot. Some of us in this room right now, we're too arrogant to edify someone in the room. Y'all don't hear me on that. I'm, I'm going to start that one over. You want to be the deal so bad that you forgot the name of the game is to edify the people who've already lived the lifestyle. I knew, to, I was telling Tashina's story so much, I forgot that I've been promoted a few times myself. I forgot all about it, I was just telling the story. So understand, I just told, matter of fact, I just told Lisa's story, uh, Double Platinum Senior Vice President Lisa Cloud, I told her story about, uh, about three days ago. A buddy of mine, his wife wanted, she was kind of reluctant about the business, she said, Look, I'm in pharmaceutical sales and I'm looking to get out. I said, man, wait, I watched one of those videos and Lisa said she was in pharmaceutical sales and she was looking to get out. I said, listen, there's this lady by the name of Lisa Cloud. She's in our business. She's a multimillionaire. Guess what? She was a pharmaceutical sales rep too. Guess what? Where's our Pastor McNair? I don't know where, 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 where'd he go. But that young lady became one of my five for that 50 days of blaze. I got my, I got my five, by the way. All right. Story sell, y'all. It's a sizzle, not the steak. When you're peaking interest, if you've been talking for 10 minutes, you lost them. Some of y'all got people tied up back there. You got them hostage in the corner. They can't get out. They, they, can't, they don't know what to do. Why? Because you are giving them the whole five links. You give them your whole nationals experience right then and there without allowing, without allowing them time to talk. Give them just a sizzle, but not the steak. So let's keep going. So exposures are simple, y'all. It's a live presentation. It's showing, what's an exposure? It's showing them the full presentation or showing them enough about five links to get them interested and get them to understand what we do. Does that make sense? So I try to get the live presentation via PBR, BOM, one-on-one. -on -one. Even online presentations, oh, what we're doing right now is what? Facebook Live. Webinars, Tupac is doing his every Monday. I'm doing mine whenever I'm home. People say, Kurt, what day you do it? When I'm home. I don't, Pac is like, a, he's like a, uh, a computer. He can program to his schedule, all right? Me, I'm not that secure. You, you gotta catch me when I get home, all right? You with me? Understand, uh, also three-way calls. And of course, what you saw with uh, Platinum Senior Vice President uh, Ashley Cooper earlier were the TV parties. Are you with me? Is this making sense so far? All right, guys, I told you right now, I couldn't, I couldn't spend the whole time getting you hyped up. I had to give you some information that's going to help you grow your business so you can walk out of here and have a little bit of content to go along with that excitement. Is that okay? All right, so let's keep going. The follow-up. Call within 20, 1 to 24 hours. If they gave you that information and they said, hey, I'm interested, they saw the presentation, they said, yes, I want to do it or I'm interested in it, why would you wait? I'm going to call him back tomorrow. I don't want to seem thirsty. Well, you need to get thirsty. You need to go after and make sure you talk to people right away. Every single day that you wait, their excitement dies. By the time that you wait a couple more days, two or three days, guess what? They're all, their informa all their excitement is completely gone. All right? On top of that, give them something of value. I like to compliment so they can remember me. I like to give them, hey, remember, look. That product that we have called TV, 
uh, give them the information like Marshall just showed. That's something of value when you start to show them the stats on how many people are going to be on TV in the world. Give them something intriguing so they remember doing that follow-up. Let them know some stats. Let them know some information. And on top of that, keep that passion. That's what's still going to get them going. Hey, look, right now, I'm, I'm ready to get you going in this business. Let's go. I want to get your information. I want you to take out your card. Let's go. But get them pumped up. Get them excited about this because you are going to show how pumped up you are. Leverage is the key. One of the secrets to success is to have more than one iron in the fire. So when I talk to you, and when I talk to you, and I say, I call Martel up, and Martel is my prospect. And I call Martel up, I say, look, Martel, I know you were excited, I know you're interested, but listen, I got another brother who um, just gave me his information, wants to get started. If you can get started right this moment, I'll be able to help you to get to that position get you one step closer to that position called executive trainer if you're ready to go right now. But don't lie, you got to really have somebody waiting to go. Some of y'all said, Kurt said, <laughs> no, it doesn't say, make sure you tell the truth. Are you with me? All right, so keys to a, a, a successful follow-up. Make sure you understand this. A good follow-up makes a difference between mediocrity and greatness. There are a lot of people who are peaked in the five links and that by you, but they're on someone else's team because you forgot to follow up. Has anybody here seen someone that you told five links to see them join the company? Absolutely, right? Even worse, have you seen them walk the stage? Oh, it hurts bad. I've seen someone get started uh, going as an indie all-star. I said, oh, I forgot to call her back. Don't do that, all right? So make sure you're doing that. So when you're talking to someone, here's some actual things you need to do. Let's get beyond just the excitement, but write down some of their goals. Ask them about some of their goals. All right, ask them what their needs were. What, what are they looking for? What information can you give them that well, they, they'll consider valuable? Here's what I mean by that. A product or service, or even information about the comp plan that, was, that will be uh, deemed valuable by, by them. Give them some information that they'll see valuable, okay? So uh, on top of that, how can you increase their desire? Well, just what I said, you can increase their desire with that leverage. If they weren't that excited, don't worry, that leverage will help them join right now. If you want them to get, get, get going right now, that's how you do it. We're talking about objections now. Objections, get your upline on the phone. Stop being a hero. Is everybody here humble enough to get your upline on the phone? All right, and remember, what were they most excited about? I always ask people, what did you like most uh, about what you just saw? Why? Because that's going to get their mind going into a positive train of thought. And that's going to get me closer to getting a yes from them. Making sense? I'm giving you guys some, some secrets, some, some tools that some of the people in the front row have used, some things I've gotten from them, some of the things I've researched, but understand these are some things going to help you close the deal over and over and over again. But beyond just the skills and the things to say, it's the psychology of a closer is going to help you become the best. That guy in the yellow right there, they call him the Black Mamba, Kobe Bryant. One of the people who you want to have the ball in his hand when the game is on the line, because you know he's got one mission and one mission only, and that's to close the deal. He got hurt a few years ago before he retired, and they asked him if he was going to quit. And his response was this, if you see me fighting a bear, pray for the bear. That's that closest mentality. But I want you guys to understand, beast mode. You heard Eric Thomas talk, who remembers Eric Thomas came to the stage, right? He started talking about beast mode. I really started thinking about uh, a, a real beast. If I was in the jungle and I saw a lion walking up to me, and I said, I wonder if this guy is here for a walk in the park. I wonder if this lion that I'm confronted with right now is here to play games. Or is he only, when you see that line, you know this is not a walk in the park. This is a business trip for him. Yes or yes? So I want you guys to understand, you have to have that beast mode mentality. Just like in the early 90s, when you saw this guy to all the way to the right. When you saw him, when you know that bell ring, you couldn't leave your seat. You didn't have time. You know he came to close the deal in a few seconds. This is strictly business. Don't get up and get popcorn. This ain't going to be long. 
Why? Because these people are closers. They have a closers mentality. And I want you guys to understand that that's psychology. When you walk in there and you're completely confident because you have the thoughts of what you need to do for your family. You're thinking about what you need to do for your why. You're thinking about all the people that you need to help in the world. You think about, you know what, I don't have time to play games. This ain't going to be a whole lot of chucking and jiving here. Right now, we're going to get down to business. This is a closers mentality. You guys with me? Successful people are 100% convinced that they are masters of their own destiny. They're not creatures of circumstance. They create circumstance. If circumstances around them suck, they change them. Five links. Right now, today, March 10th, 2017, if the circumstances around you suck, you have to be the one to go out and change it. Stop pointing the finger at corporate. Stop pointing the finger at the, your, your downline, at your sideline, at your upline. If your situation sucks, you fix it. I'm telling you right now, I don't have an excuse to give you. Hey, Kurt, what's wrong with your business? Me. I'll do it. I'll fix it. What's going to, what, what are you going to do better? Hey, I'll figure it out. I'm not blaming anybody else. I'm not saying my team didn't do well. I'm letting you know right now, I'll go out and get it done. And that's why when that five, I got five promo came out, I really want to jump on the phone and tell all my team, y'all go get five. But what would be more impactful than telling them to go get five? I got five myself. I got a friend from childhood started. I got a friend from college started. I got a young lady who followed me on Instagram. I've never seen her before in my life. She was with another network marketing company. She said, I ain't going to lie. You're smarter than those guys. Can I join your team? Are you with me? I got that pharmaceutical sales rep started, all right? And I just got a friend I used to play basketball with started. I let him take a couple winning shots, like I let Marshall do that in that last tournament we played, right? Some of y'all remember that last shot, right? <laughs> so understand, guys, check this out. I'm going to close out in a, in a second. These are the, the uh, common objections you're going to face, all right? And I want to give you answers to these. I'm going to skip no need right now. I'm going to go to no hurry. No hurry is a simple one. We have promotions that are over tomorrow. We have promotions that are over next Friday. Let people know when those promotions are over so they can get some more urgency behind it. Are you with me? All right, so no hurry, think promotions. Are you with me? No desire, listen, that's the leverage one again. Hey, look, I have someone else who's getting ready to start it right now. Listen, you could be one step closer to uh, getting that executive trainer position. So when it comes to no desire, I want you to think leverage. Are you with me? When it comes to no money, what I typically do is I say, look, and, and I, want you to guys, I want you guys to say, look, what if my mentor was to give you the keys to his brand new 750 Li BMW? It's about a $100,000 car. If I told you you could have those keys fair and square right now tonight, would you be able to come up with $249 to get that car? Everybody would say yes, right? Understand, cost is a function of value. You give them the value, they'll realize they can get 249, but then place that same value on this opportunity. So when you think about money, remember, cost is a function of value. Are you with me? No trust. Listen, we have all the documentation in the world to build the trust. Let them know about the A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Show them the magazines that we've been documenting. Show them all the different information about the company so you can start to build that trust. Are you with me? But there's a story I want you guys to see about need. I want you to hear this story. And when I heard this story, I didn't really understand it, but there, I knew one thing I needed to do was I needed to be the leader in my family, not to just do well in five links, but to really break that poverty curse in my family and in my community. You guys know I'm from Northeast Baltimore, right? So there was a story. I want you guys to hear the story. It was told to me. I'm going to tell it to y'all. Is that okay? You guys can rip it off and duplicate it. You can have it after I give it to you. Are you with me? There's a story about a guy driving his car driving his car down the highways, down I-85 right here in Atlanta. And traffic was bad, and people were rubbernecking. As he was getting up to the source of the traffic, someone yelled out, it's a car on fire. And that same guy, what he did was, oh, it's a car on fire, man. I hope there's nobody heard anything like that. That same guy, next, same guy but next scenario. Same, same, same guy, next scenario. Check this out. Driving down I-85, there's a lot of traffic going on. Check this out. He yells out, someone yells out to him, it's a car on fire. It's some people in it. So now we're talking about, oh, some people in it. Man, that's not good. 
well, some people, and maybe let me check, make sure they're all right. Oh, okay, well, I think I hear a siren or something. I'm sure the police will handle it, the fire truck will handle it, they'll be okay. Are you with me? Same guy, next scenario, driving down I-85, traffic is bad, people are rubbernecking. He tries to get to figure out what's going on. He said, look, it's a car on fire. There's some people in it. It looks like some kids. He says, oh my God, I can't let no kids get hurt. I gotta see what I can do. And right before he gets there, ambulance shows up, fire truck shows up, and he says, oh man, pray to God that those kids are okay. I'm gonna let the professionals do what they gotta do. Same guy, last scenario. Driving down I-85. Traffic is bad. He pulls up, gets close to what's going on, and someone yells out to him, it's a car on fire. There's some people in it. It looks like some kids. Wait, those are your kids. And at that point, he jumps out of his car. He goes to that fire. He starts pulling those kids out that car because he knows at this point there is a need for him to start getting those kids out that car. I want you guys to see right now, your kids are burning in that car because you don't see the need to grind for your business. You don't see the need to close these people out. I'm telling you guys right now, if you want to break that poverty, you take this thing as serious as that guy who was pulling those kids out that car. The last keys to closing are this. Listen more than you talk. You guys can take a picture of the screen if you want. Build more value than the actual cost of the product. Attitude is everything. Belief is everything. Know your products inside and out. Ask for the sale. Shoot your shot. Wayne Gressy said you miss 100% of the shots that you never take. Shoot your shot. Ask for it. Your tone tells more truth than words ever will. People make 38% of their decision based on tone and 7% based on words. Make sure that your voice is one of confidence. Visualize the sale. Do you see it? Do you, when you meet someone, do you see them becoming your customer? Do you see them becoming your business partner? I see it. I look at them, I say, oh, that's my next business partner right there. I can see. Oh, man, look at the way she's dressed, look at the way he's dressed. Oh, that's, that's my team right there. I see it. I visualize that. Remember, you're either selling or you're getting sold. You selling them on getting in or they're selling you on why they're not. They might be selling you on another company. Practice makes perfect. I can tell you how long this presentation should last or your normal presentation at the BOM or one-on-one -on -one or whatever, but I cannot tell you how long you have to practice. You can practice as long as you want. Get better. And of course, persistence wins. Uh, if we can get this video real quick. The fast food empire with 1,600 restaurants in 50 states, five foreign countries, with an annual revenue of in the neighborhood of $700 million. One word, persistence. Nothing in this world can take the place of good old persistence. Talent won't. Nothing's more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius won't. Unrecognized genius is practically a cliche. Education won't. Why, the world is full of educated fools. Persistence and determination alone are all powerful. The man who started McDonald's did not create McDonald's. He did, it wasn't his idea, but he took someone else's idea who was afraid to be persistent to go after what they want and he took that idea and turned it into a multi-billion dollar company that is now the number one franchise in the world. It's also the, the company that started the fast food industry. If you are persistent, you can get anything what you want. So I promise you guys, don't give up and you will get it. But there's one secret weapon I gotta give y'all tonight. The reason why you paid your money to come to National. The reason why you, you got a babysitter. You took those days off of work. You argued with your spouse a little bit. It was a little bit of stress getting here today. You made sure your oil was changed, the tires were right, the flight was right, whatever it was, you did that, you committed to it. I said, for everything that you've done to get here today, I gotta give you something that you had no idea was in store. There was one piece of information that I heard, and when I heard it, it changed everything. It was from a young lady who was a teacher 
just years before she got started Five Links, making a humble salary. And when she hit the pinnacle of her position in Five Links, she was making twice in one month of what she was making in a whole year as a teacher. I said, man, if I could get people to hear that secret, that little piece of information that she's got, and it's a really big piece of information once you hear what it is, I said, if I can get everybody to hear that, we might be able to change what we can do as an entire company. Would anybody want to hear that one piece of information that created the first diamond ever in Five Links history? Does anybody want to hear what can take a person who, with all the odds against them in the world, people would say, no way you can make it, no way you can be successful, no way you can accomplish these things. Who here wouldn't mind hearing that piece of information? All right, I need you to stand back up to your feet. Hello, Five Links. All right, so um, I have no slides, and I didn't prepare a speech, but I figured I would at least come up and speak from my heart. Is that okay? So they, my, my husband asked me to come up and share some, some secrets with you, but I feel led in my heart to just talk. Is that okay? Is talking okay? Yeah. Um, how many of you know the journey is difficult? No, 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 no. Because I think people assume that this is easy, but how many of you know that the journey is difficult? And along the journey, and this has been 11 years, I just celebrated my 11th year anniversary with this company. And I know that we're in a very confusing time. Um, I, I saw a few of you in the hallway, and I felt like I was a ghost. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. And um, I know that you know it's a scary time. And so I just want to let you know that the journey is difficult. Since I started in this business, I've like had all of these like ups and downs, highs and lows, ups and downs, highs and lows. And I think that people think that getting to the top, that you have it easy. But I believe that the more that you're destined to be someone great, the more the devil wants to play with you. And it started very early on in my business from, we all know how difficult it could be to just get family to support you. We all know that, right? And then very early on, I went through a divorce. And I remember during that time in my business, I could barely get out of bed, but I would get up and do a meeting for someone. And I remember, I kept thinking in the back of my mind that as long as I keep putting others first, you keep putting someone else first, that eventually it'll work out for you because you take you out of it and you put them before you put yourself. And so I would go out and I would do meetings and I'm helping people. And I remember it started very early on where I got these group of ladies together and I was so excited, and I remember we had an event in Atlanta, and I paid for a van to have them come to this training event. And before you know it, it didn't take long, but one negative person in the group caused the whole group to dismantle. And I had just built them, like four of them were national directors, three of them were EDs. And it just took one little seed of negativity for the whole group to dismantle. It started very early on. Then time went on and I would see people have success and then I would lose them and you see them come and you would see them go. And it was difficult to deal with. 
And then we had that big training on the main stage about a year and a half ago. How many remember that? <laughs> remember that? And I came and I was like, whatever, get out. Get out, right? But what you don't know is after that event, I cried for months. Months. Because when you build with people and they leave, it hurts. And I, I said to myself, I mean, who, I'm a leader. And I said to myself, but it's okay, you rebuild. And, and I did. You know, but it was difficult. It felt different. And it's happening again. And you ask, where am I? I'm here. and it's gonna hurt again. So when you see me, I need your energy. I need your help because the devil is busy. He is very, very busy. But then I was thinking that maybe it's not him that's busy at all. Maybe it's God. Maybe he's busy. Maybe he's doing something. Maybe he has something worked out that I don't know about. I can only tell you who I am. I can't speak for nobody else, so don't ask me where they at. I can only tell you I'm not selling watches. My spirit was broken, and then I came in the room, and I see the people, and I was like, something's wrong with these people. Like, they just won't quit. <laughs> like, what is it with you guys? You just love this company. to take you from something you love. How do you close strong? You have to believe. And I believe in you 100%. My biblical game stepped up yet, like Pastor McKnight. I'm gonna get my scriptures down packed so I have like some good messages when I come up here. But I can only speak from my heart. And I believe that if we stay together, that we can fix it. Where's Tupac? <laughs> I called him and I said, what you want to do? He said, let's stay. I said, let's stay. <laughs> it's that simple. I didn't sign up for just money. And I'm not taking money to leave. But I'm going to tell you this. We don't exist if you don't work. If we don't work together, we don't exist as a company. 
If we don't talk to people and we don't put in customers and partners, don't ask me where I am. Okay, because I don't exist if you don't exist. If you don't work it, if you're just here but you're not working the business, we don't exist. So don't look for something when you're not working it. Here's our shot, because they're watching. They're watching. This is our shot. And we need you right now, and we need each other to work it. Because if we work it, we can keep it. And there's something here that I cannot explain. It's a spirit in the room. It's love in this room. It's a togetherness in this room. And if you want to keep us together, then we have to work this business. And we have to stop looking and waiting to see who's leaving next. We have to stop looking and waiting to see what's going to happen next. And we have to walk by faith. Because if you walk by faith, he'll take care of everything else. <laughs> and so, only thing I ask is that as you leave, don't forget how important you are. Don't forget that every little thing that you do when no one is looking matters to us. We need you, and you need us. I'm a leader of this company, I'm the first Diamond Senior Vice President, and nobody can ever take that away from me. Thank you, guys. I had something else to say, but uh, we'll wait till next national for that. Is that all right? So guys, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we're here. You understand where we stand, and I want you guys to understand that we want you to grow and grow and grow as people, as business partners, and as his Fivelings family. So with that being said, we're gonna end this presentation right here, and we will see you guys, I believe, back at the BOM tonight. Crystal Cadiz, are you on for the BOM? Jonathan McKnight, are you on for the BOM? Do you need anything else for that BOM? So with that being said, y'all, God bless y'all. Diamond Senior Vice President Kurt Anderson, my beautiful wife, Tashina Anderson, thank you. <laughs>